Welcome to Raw Online. In this session, we are going to discuss about pelvic diaphragm in detail. The competency we are going to cover under this topic is describe and identify the muscles of pelvic diaphragm. First, we will see what are the muscles present within the pelvic wall. For that, you should know what is true pelvis. So, this is a true pelvis, pelvic cavity, which is present below the pelvic inlet. So, what forms a pelvic inlet? Posteriorly, in the midline, it is formed by the promontory of the sacrum. On either side, it is formed by the anterior border of the ala of sacrum. And this is an arcuate line, which is formed by the iliac bone. And this is a iliopectineal line and pubic crest. So, these are the dotted red line represent the pelvic inlet. So, the cavity which is present below this is called true pelvis. So, each pelvic cavity has two lateral wall and floor. So, in each lateral wall, we can see the two notches. They are called greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch. These notches are converted into foramen by two ligaments, namely sacrospinous ligament and sacrotuberous ligament. Apart from these two ligaments, we will see two more muscles. The posterolaterally, it is bounded by the piriformis muscle and anterolaterally, there is one more muscle called operator internus. So, what is the origin of this piriformis muscle? This muscle takes origin from the anterior surface of the sacrum and leaves the true pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen and enters the gluteal region. Whereas, this muscle, operator internus muscle, takes origin from the inner aspect of the operator membrane and leaves the pelvic cavity through the lesser sciatic foramen. After leaving the pelvic cavity, these two muscles get inserted into the greater trochanter of femur. So, the pelvic cavity, the outer limit is delineated by a muscle known as pelvic diaphragm. So, the majority of the floor of the pel true pelvis is formed by pelvic diaphragm which is also called pelvic floor. So, in this picture you can see the entire muscle fiber forming the pelvic diaphragm. So, we are going to discuss uh, the pelvic diaphragm under the following headings, introduction, components and attachment. Up to this we are going to see in the first part and which is followed by vascular supply, nerve supply, openings, functions and clinical correlates in the second part. So, what is pelvic diaphragm? It is a gutter shaped thin sheet of muscular partition separating the true pelvis above and the perineum below. So, this arrangement of the muscle fibers resembles that of hammer which is held in position by the anteroposterior diameter of the true pelvis. So, the arrangement of this pelvic diaphragm muscles resembles that of hammock which is fixed anteroposteriorly along the true pelvis. So, this is a mid sagittal section of the female pelvis. You can very well appreciate the hammock appearance of the pelvic diaphragm which is separating the true pelvis above and perineum below. You can see the uh, viscer pelvic viscera arranged from anterior to posterior. So, the anterior most is the urinary bladder. And the middle one is the uterus and vagina. The posterior mose is the rectum which is continuing as the anal canal. So, will the pelvic diaphragm covers the entire floor of the true pelvis? No, because it is deficient in the anterior aspect which is supported inferiorly by the urogenital diaphragm. So, you can see this is a small triangular area which is deficient in the first picture and the second picture you can see this deficient part is enclosed by a urogenital diaphragm which is present inferior to the pelvic diaphragm. To understand this better, so this is a pelvic outlet which is seen from the inferior aspect. So, this is a pelvic outlet which is formed anteriorly by the pubic symphysis on either side by the ischiopubic ramus and this is a sacrotuberous ligament and this is the tip of the coccyx. So, this diamond shaped pelvic outline, so this is a diamond shaped pelvic outlet which is separated by a imaginary line connecting the two ischial tuberosity into anterior urogenital triangle and the posterior anal triangle. So, in this view, you can see only the posterior half of the pelvic diaphragm very well and the anterior half is not seen because this anterior half of the pelvic diaphragm is obliterated by the presence of urogenital diaphragm which is occupying the anterior triangle that is a urogenital triangle. So, to view the entire aspect of the 
pelvic diaphragm you should remove this urogenital diaphragm so that only we can able to see the anterior half of the inferior view of the pelvic diaphragm and you can see in this picture this is the anal opening which is surrounded by external anal sphincter and this is a anocoxygeal raphe connecting the tip of the coccyx to the anal sphincter now we'll see the component of pelvic diaphragm so what is pelvic diaphragm it is a two facial layers with intervening muscle is known as pelvic diaphragm so there are two fasciae which is forming the pelvic diaphragm one is on the superior aspect the other is on the inferior aspect so between this superior and inferior fascia there is a two pair of muscle present within it so the first muscle is the levator ani so this levator ani consists of three components namely pubococcygeus puborectalis and iliococcygeus the other muscle present between this two fascia is the coccygeus muscle which is the ischiococcygeus part of the pelvic diaphragm